and we are about to go racing for the first time this weekend in round five of the European Le Mans series. Very well behaved, waiting for those red lights to go out, which they do now. It's a great getaway from Kiffin Simpson. Now a lock-up, though, around the outside for Manuel Maldonado for Panis Racing. He's actually going to lose positions as a result of that, fighting to squeeze back in behind the Duquesne team of René Binder. So Maldonado through the first split in fifth position. And now the concertina effect in LMP3. There's a car facing the wrong way there. That might even be the pole sitter of Michael Jensen. Did the eight car come through? Sally Yolic is off the road. And he's in the gravel the and can't move. The championship leader in LMP2 Pro-Am. And those rear wheels are firmly embedded in the gravel stones. Big, huge drama in LMP2 Pro-Am. And for the overall, for that matter. It's at turn eight. And he had plenty of warning that that was going to happen. But then became, completely became a passenger. Sideways he goes. Here comes the Aston Martin, fully sideways, and Ben Tuck will barge his way up the inside, I think minus the contact so far. And yes, into second position, as long as he can swing across the nose of Beres Ferrari, and he makes it stick. Uh, so up into second place, it will be a drive-through penalty, meanwhile, for Tom Van Rompuy for that contact. And the 99 car coming to the right-hand side of the, uh, the track to, to make the pit stop, and Martin Berry loses another place. 56 minutes to go, that will be the penultimate stop required for that car on fuel. Either side of the 93 go this battling LMP2s, and they do the same to the 77 as well, which sits second in the order in GTE, in the hands of Christian Reed. It's two of the Proton cars together on track, but uh, not in the order. Interview, there's been an absolute monster crash for Jonas Reed in the Proton Competition 99. Let's hope Jonas is OK. Almost a big shunt involving three LMP2s as they were starting to be in Chevron formation. I think dive planes were just about retained. The 65 to the high line of one of the two cool racing cars is the 47 of Richard de Guerres. And Richard getting by the 65 for third place in LMP2. And the one thing we're not short of now is uh, slick tyre mileage because of the amount of rain we've had and wet weather tyres unlimited, so you can keep hurling groove tyres at these cars. Three sets, so 12 individual slick tyres otherwise for LMP2. I think he's through, he is. Some very wide, James Allen, there. Is he on well. wet? Is he on wet? Is he on wet tyres? What was the weather doing? It didn't help with this spin, the number 17 car, but the damage the had already, already been done to the rear had. left. In the direction of, thankfully, Wyatt Brickercheck getting out of the car. And all he can do is look back at the state of the 13. And I'm minded now to think back to, was it this time last year when into Europol competition had a horrendous meeting here at Portimao as well? It was the well, final 15 minutes of the season. Where their car ended up in the gravel down at turns one, two and three. He was overlapping it, wasn't he? And uh, thankfully there was space to the left-hand side of Alex Lynn, otherwise that could have been absolute calamity. And now we do have calamity because the Duquesne car is sideways and the 47 of Pachito Lopez was also involved with it as well. Thankfully it's off the racing line and allowed everybody else safely through but think about the thought in Gilles Duquesne's mind right now 16 car the hands of Alessio Picariello is the leader catching Fate's lost the lead loses the lead to the 77 car round the outside gets it back Proton on Proton Porsche on Porsche but no more serious a battle on track than it is between these two so the lead battles 2.3 for the overall and LMP2 Nothing at all. But round, the outside, round the outside. Off the road goes Jop van Utrecht. Is he going to force the issue? And this is where Watt Jakobsen. That's clever from Vaxivier. Oh, and the spin for Jakobsen. What was that contact from the, from the cars behind? So he is this far away from getting back to the lead lap after those huge... Oh, contact between the two Pro-Ams, and that will send Vaxavier off the road. Louis Delatraz trying to take the two of them here and get back onto the lead lap, and he's going to do it. It does it. 
And here now in the middle of the track is Matthias Besch, who will take the class lead. What about the DKR car? That's not on the lead lap, is yeah, it? That's in a battle with uh, Delatraz. Yes. <laughs> the switch Sam Cox. I'm not saying anything till after this race. It's been a hugely emotional last couple of weeks for Sam and Stu Cox. Will it be a race win? Will it be a championship? Will it be? Could it be both? Well, they do need the seven points. Here comes Ollie Jarvis late on the brakes. Now, Lim's not going to take this lying down. He's off the road. They're both off the road coming out of turn five. And the better run from Alex Lynn, but he was outside the track limits as he did it. Jarvis across the nose of Alex Lynn again to take the race lead. And as long as he can get the car stopped into turn eight, which United Autosports side by side between the two leaders in GTE. But carry tries the outside. This is great stuff. And he's, what a way. He's going to get it. He's got it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's still side by oh. side. No. As the race leaders come out of the final corner and will head across the line. And it's United Autosport to win for the second time this season. A highly unlikely result compared to the qualifying earlier on today. But it will be the 77 car that brings it home. Julian Andler at the wheel of the car, but Christian Reed will equal the record number of wins in ELMS history in GTE. And we've still got one race to go. The what six, a race. The 16 Proton car. And now we turn the spotlight to LMP3. We've already had the winners across the line. That's WTM by Rinaldi Racing. But after a season, and not quite a full season, it's the 17 car that will take the championship. They came here with a huge lead and needed to finish somewhere in the top seven. They finished fourth. After three wins then for Cool Racing and four podiums, they took a pole position along the way too. They've sealed the championship with a round to spare. One more race to come at Portimao, but they already have the trophy. Stop what you're doing. Super happy, super happy. You know, uh, it was, it's been a really, really, really competitive year. You know, it was, it's been a really, really, really perfect year, to be honest, you know, we've been fighting all the year long, you know, everything was planned. And yeah, like every, at the end, we just needed to put all together this, this race and at the end we put it. So I think uh, we, Marcos, Chila and me did, uh, it couldn't be better, you know, I think we fully deserve it. And I think uh, it's the best free thing that we could have done, you know, just bring the car home and yeah, I'm just happy. <laughs> Also a tremendous victory for United Autosports. It looked most unlikely at the start of the day, but a second win this year for the Yorkshire squad. Yeah, I mean, just a fabulous race. Um, difficult to actually know what happened in the car. I mean, went from dry to wet. Um, so many amazing calls from the team on strategy with tyre choice. Um, and then the last stint at the end to, to come from the back all the way through, um, incredible. Big thanks to my two teammates and the team who did a, an incredible job. And the 37 car making it a superb day for Cool Racing after in LMP3 they sealed the season title. Uh, after a late spin as well for Malta Jakobsen, he charged hard and finished second on the road but eventually won it. And in the GTs, a victory for the 77 Proton Porsche. They are still in with a shout of the title as we head into Sunday. 120 laps completed by the United Autosports car. By 0.8 of a second they win. The Cool Racing 37 car takes victory in LMP2 Pro-Am. WTM by Rinaldi Racing win in LMP3 and the 77 Proton Competition Porsche heads a 1-2 for that team as the 16 continues to lead the championship by just three points heading into the final race of the year.